Hi everyone, today's guest is a very inspiring woman that I've personally known for a decade. She's a social media influencer. She also has a YouTube channel sharing Vedic wisdom. A mom of four and a very dear friend, it's Kishori Jani. Hello everyone, my name is Kishori Jani. Um, some of you may know me, some of you may not. I uh, try to share, um, you know, ideas about Sanatan Dharma and um, Vedic wisdom online. And I'm a mom of four. I teach Sanskrit part-time. I'm really uh, happy to be here with Rakhi, speaking about um, motherhood and how we can feel a bit more empowered in our own skin. So thanks for having me, Rakhi. No problem. So let's start with the big question. I think all us moms kind of get asked this question at some point. What do you do other than being a mom? And I think that that in itself kind of brings a lot of questions and you start to think, what do I do other than a mom? But why mm. do we have to question that? So mm. I want you to kind of give us your knowledge um, as to <laughs> as to how how to feel empowered when you get asked these questions. And ultimately, why do we need to be more than just mm. a mother, like to be able yeah. to be fulfilled? So mm. if there's any any knowledge that you have on that. <laughs> It's a very, very relevant question because um, I, I don't even know if it's so much other people asking. Now I find that more and more in my conversations, it's the moms themselves. I feel like we ourselves uh, have this expectation that somehow motherhood is just going to be a phase in our life that we just have to kind of get over and then we get back to life. So uh, get back to our real identity. Uh, personally, even myself, I remember becoming a mom for the first time. Um, I did have a real identity crisis. I'm like, because all of a sudden your life stops. Whatever you've been doing so far, it stops. Yeah. And you have to really slow down and reassess. Okay, this is my new reality. So I think most moms will go through that um, re uh, realigning of the ident identity and some of us will deal with it better than others. Personally, I don't remember ever a time thinking I'm going to have lots of kids and I'm going to be a mom. That wasn't really my goal growing up. I was quite a bit of a tomboy and uh, I considered myself a feminist. I didn't even think I was ever going to get married. I just wanted to have a career and be self-sufficient and, you know, not have to rely on anyone. And I spent a good, good amount of my energy just on that. And when I went to America, I did my uni there and I worked there for quite a few years. I realized that the feminist dream and ideal is a little bit misleading because we, we sell ourselves this idea that we can do it all. We, we should therefore be able to do it all. Like if I tell you, Rocky, you can do it all. Inherent in that statement is actually a little bit of the assumption that if you can do it all, therefore you probably should do it all. And so we, I think we buy into that narrative in the name of feminism. And we, we tend to just get carried away that, okay, well, we have to have a career. We should be self-sufficient and, um, you know, motherhood, if it comes along, that's great. But, you know, when I get back to my career, that's, that's who I really am. Yeah. My identity is my degree, my, um, source of income, my prestige and my name, and uh, how society view me is most definitely more than a mom. <laughs> and it's actually really subtle. It's a very subtle narrative that just goes deeper and deeper within. And I'm finding it um, just rampant everywhere. Now there's even uh, the idea that you can't even say mother, like the NHS, NHS have adopted a new lingo where you can say you should say parent one parent two because motherhood itself is now kind of taken out of the woman identity i'm not trying to you know i have nothing against the trans uh, community or trying to incorporate and adapt to include them that's great but we should be really mindful of what what it then does to the identity of womanhood itself and motherhood itself it's it's kind of on the same vein, excluding the the part of us that is so inherent. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's uh, taking away from our identity. And it's really subtle. Like if you can't say the word mother, 
you're kind of saying, well, that, that biological function that we have is not really that important. It's just kind of secondary. It's there yeah. and you, you, know, you, just, you just deal with it and kind of overcome, overcome your biological limitation. It's really just so shocking and the, how destructive that can be to our uh, identity once we enter motherhood. I'm not saying everyone's going to be a mother, but most of us are going to become mothers. And if we've constantly been uh, like taking in those narratives that somehow our biology is limiting for us, the feminine aspect of us of having a womb, having our periods, having hormonal changes throughout the month, going through menopause, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things somehow are limitations to our final agenda of having a career and all that. If we buy that narrative, then motherhood itself becomes an obstacle, yeah. becomes a phase that we just have to endure. And um, that's really sad. There's a movie out right now this is a little bit off topic, but it's called Don't Worry, Darling. <laughs> I haven't watched it, but I watched the previews and I was, I was really disappointed with it because it, on the surface, it seems like a feminist movie, you know, trying to kind of warn the, wo the woman that don't just trust a man. Don't just go with your feminine instinct of wanting to be loved and want to be taken care of. Somehow that those instincts are weak. And if we give in to just loving a man who tells you, don't worry, darling, uh, it's all taken care of. Somehow that's kind of a weakness in us. You know what I mean? Like, it's a really subtle thing because it's supposed to be empowering. When you watch that movie, you're supposed to think, oh, I, I should just become self-sufficient and I should not have to rely on anyone. I should never give myself to the degree that some man is going to take advantage of me. And I get it. I think that's a bit of a cliched narrative now. Yeah. I like we're kind of over it now like man as the abuser and man as the one who is trying to hold us back and hold us down yeah. I feel like now the narrative is so much more that we ourselves put so much pressure on ourselves that we can't trust anyone yeah. I think that's the bigger issue for some okay there are abusive relationships and I get that you know like we have to be really careful not to get into abusive relationships and and of course men can be perpetrators of the abuse but the ability to trust is really rare these days especially for young girls who might be looking for like okay how, guidance how do I find a partner should I even find a partner yeah. you know that movie is going to put you off <laughs> finding any kind of man in your life because it just assumes men are out to abuse us and it's a power trip and it's always a competition I have talked to women who are actually feeling competitive with their own husband feeling like well my husband has a, such a great job and he earns so much money so I I should also have to contribute in that way I should also have to um I should be able to also be a valuable member of society despite being a mom of two or three or four I'm like that blows my mind it's just such a what the heck have we sold what pill have we swallowed that's telling us that being a mother is not enough. That's telling us, um, you know, whatever, whatever crazy, you know, um, narratives that we repeat to ourselves. And that it's really, really disheartening because the more I speak to women, there's, there's quite a few that, that, you know, I get in touch with a lot of, a lot of modern women who are working mothers and there's so much anxiety, there's so much confusion, there's so much pain that's being experienced because we cannot do it all. It's yeah. not physically bloody possible. It's not, but, but, we, but we feel like we should be able to do it all because you know, men are doing so much, but we're different. And if we don't acknowledge that's, that our biology is different, if we're just gonna suppress the biology, um, it's a really heavy price that we pay for it. I and also it's, think it's kind of lost in translation a little bit because when they talk about men and women being the same, they're not talking about it physiological. And I think a lot of people think that because some, because like say your partner's doing it or your husband's doing it, you should be able to do it. But men and women are very different. Like 
things we can do. I'm not going to be giving birth anytime soon. Like so then, so then you know, being able to try and be the same, it just doesn't make sense. Like mm-hmm. we have, we have talents where mm-hmm. we're better. They have talents that they're better, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean we have to always, like you're saying, compete. I think it's lost in translation because I don't think that that narrative of men and women being equal is that. I think no, it's just taken no. literally and then everyone's just kind of gone with it. But it's, it's more... Not even, it's not even that the husband has asked his wife. Yeah. And it's not even the men. I'm not, the competitive spirit is actually coming from within us. That's, yes. It's not that society is telling us that. It's not that the husband is saying, well, you need to go back to work and you need to make as much as I do. Maybe some husbands might be abusive like that. But the the women I'm talking to are very powerful, capable women. And they're, I think we're doing that narrative to ourselves because we're, because somehow the idea is that, that, like we just said, being at home, looking after the kids and being there present with them mm. is somehow secondary. It's a, it's a less important job or it's not as fulfilling or whatever, whatever we've convinced ourselves. We're not comfortable with just doing that. And for me, that's been a huge transformation. Like when I, when the, you know, the light went off, when it dawned on me that actually this is the most joyful I've ever been. Becoming a mother has been the most powerful experience of my life. The biggest miracles of my life have been in motherhood. Of course, it's hard work. Of course, it's like thankless task. Of course, it's, what did you say? We were just talking about it. You said, and the average working mom works how many hours? Yeah, 98 hours per week. So it's the same as uh, working two and a, two and a half full-time jobs per this week. It's crazy, isn't it? So that study was done 2018. There was actually a study conducted for this. So I yeah. just blew my mind. I was like, oh my God, this is a lot. A lot of hours to rake in. <laughs> no wonder why we're feeling so much anxiety and pressure. Yeah. But it's not someone else who's telling us that we have to live that life. It's not. It's actually my my greatest like realization is that we're doing this to ourselves. And I just want to anyone listening to this, please let's 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 reject that narrative that we can do it all. I reject the narrative that I have to do it all because I can do it all. Yeah. Sure, I could, but at what cost? At what cost? My mental health, my physical health the health of my children, the mental stability of the family, it's absolutely, the price that we're paying is ridiculous. Yeah. It's too much. And it's not just affecting ourselves. It's it's affecting the entire family, family dynamics. Children are being affected by it. If anyone's heard of Gabor Mate, I really highly recommend uh, listening to him and his parenting advice because I really buy into the idea that attach, attachment parenting is so important uh, giving that um, very conscious attention and time to our children can literally change their lives yeah. it can literally uh, save them from anxiety in the future and all kinds of mental uh, you know instabilities and learning disabilities because they feel fulfilled then if, if we give our children actual um love and time with a with attention actual attention not just being present with them but actually being engaged and and showing them that we're happy to be here that's actually the the secret that the child can pick up oh my mother's here but is she really here does she want to be here with me that's that's what they're actually picking up on the energy that does this parent want to be here with me do they find joy in my presence the child picks up on that they're energy soaking, absorbing, um, living spirits. You know, the child, all it needs is the, is knowing that I'm valuable, that my parents actually uh, want me around and I'm not a burden on their time and energy and money. That I think very, very few of us have experienced it in our life and are able to give it. So going back to when you said that we are we're kind of bringing this narrative for ourselves. Where do you think that's coming from? Where do you think it's kind of come from? Because obviously we've not just woken up thinking, oh yeah, this is not this is not my purpose or this is not fulfilling. How do you think over time it's kind of built up to this thing that we've just got it built in us that as soon as we become a mother? I know like some of the moms I speak to, 
they they're pregnant they've already decided when they're going back to work <laughs> and they've yeah. already got it all planned out that as soon as the baby goes into you know this much they're going to go into childcare. i'll be starting my work um and obviously motherhood isn't like that you don't know what's really going to happen like to that mm-hmm. level but like where do you think that's come from that thinking i mean besides the fact that probably a lot of us need two income households but if that, that, that that's fine that's understandable if you, you if you require uh, it's a requirement you've got to that's just what you've got to do but what's beautiful is that the child knows the difference if a mother is just going back to work because she wants to that child is going to know yeah. because even when you come back from work that mother is not really going to be present because actually the entire motherhood experience is just a phase like i said and the point is to get over it right So it's not about whether we work or not, or how many hours of the day we're actually spending with a child. It's about what are we saying in those hours of the day? I have really good friends who work crazy jobs, um, very powerful careers. And uh, yet when they come back, it's it's about what you're doing with your child when you're back with them. The quality, isn't it? The quality. Because I also know moms who are with their children the whole day and you can just see that they're not present. They're not actually there in in energy. They're not actually there in in spirit. They're just you may be spending twelve hours a day with a child, but completely resenting that time and experiencing it as a burden. Yeah. And the child knows this is a real secret. The child will know whether you want to be there or not. Yeah. And you could be doing spending crazy amounts of money and trying to just you know get through the time or you could spend absolutely nothing doing absolutely nothing but just sitting there with the child the child would know the difference so we cannot fake it we can't fake that that bond and that connection so my big push to anyone hearing this is let's change our own mindset because there's nothing else that can be done yeah you know it's not about where you are or how many hours of work you do It's about how we approach motherhood itself. What is the mindset we're entering? If we approach it just like a burden, just like a phase we need to get through, just like, um, you know, everyone's doing it. I just need to tick this box. Then that's equivalent experience we're going to have. Or we could go back to our roots. This is why I just love the ideas in Sanatan Dharma and the Vedic philosophy and the wisdom, because motherhood is sacred. Right from the get-go, we're trained. In fact, narrative is given to us that motherhood is worshipable. The first guru is the mother. As soon as a woman becomes a a pregnant lady, we worship her. We literally actually do an arti to the pregnant lady. And she is is viewed as a representation of Lakshmi herself, of the goddess, the divine goddess herself. Everyone in the household will try to feed her and buy presents for her and make her feel so special. Like like the entire world depends on you. And that this act that you're doing is so uh, profoundly beneficial for the entire human race. And it is, it is. But if we don't buy into that narrative and if we, then how can that experience, you know, awaken in us? It has to be, like you're saying, you asked the question, where is the narrative coming from? And I'm sorry to say, but it's a Western Western idea that we are all valued simply based on our capitalist output. Raki, you're only worth the amount of money you make yeah. or the amount of degrees that you have or what is your net worth in, cap- in the capitalist system. And what's so sad is that if that's the only worth that men and women have, women will always lose. So I reject it. I reject the system that only values me based on money mm-hmm. or what output or what production I can do to, to uh, you know, further this capitalist agenda. I refuse to be uh, valued at face value, at a monetary uh, means. And I therefore realize that actually all of our ancient wisdom, everything our Great, great grandparents have ever been trying to tell us, hey, slow down doing your periods. Hey, take the time out. Yeah. You know, that's not to oppress us. That's not to abuse us. 
and to just make us like tied down to the kitchen and just make us little baby making machines. No, <laughs> it was so that we believed in ourselves so that we actually valued the sacred miraculous journey that motherhood is. And I tell you, you know, I had four babies and I would keep going because the joy that that I actually experienced when when you believe in yourself, when you believe in the role of motherhood, when you um, transform it into something spiritual, we have the power to transform it from completely mundane, materialistic, capitalistic venture to something completely sacred and spiritual. We have the power to change that belief system. But we're going to have to be mindful of what we put in. I reject movies like Don't Worry, Darling, or like the, every other countless uh, garbage that's coming out t trying to tell women, well, unless you're like Ms. Marvel or something, like super Bionic. human. <laughs> Bionic. Yeah. Unless you're something superhuman, you're not really, you know, you're worth yeah. your, your weight. You know, you're not really worth your weight. Yeah. So I'm just so grateful to be a mother. And uh, I, if anyone's listening to this, any mothers listening to this, just know that you are extremely valuable and that you're miraculous and that you're, you know, don't let anyone else tell you that your time that you're spending with your child is a waste of your time or is not bringing in enough money and just everything else can wait. Your child is not going to be a child for long. And whatever we give in that moment, whatever spiritual connection we can make, not material, not about what we're doing with them. It's about how we're feeling with them. It's about our own mental space. If we can really take care of our positivity, that's what's going to flow through to the child and last a lifetime. Yeah. I suppose a lot of motherhood isn't quantitative. Like you can't even say that you have done this, 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 oh. this. A lot of it is working in the shadows to help nurture this child, to bring this child. And all that you can't put a price on. You can't, no. you, there's nothing, you can't, forget the price. You can't even like say, oh, I achieved this much today because there's there's no result. Like, you know, it's not like an on-off mm. button. You switch it on and you know, okay, electricity is here. It's not like that. So a lot of the stuff that mothers do and a lot of fathers have started doing as well. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of things that people can't on the outside see what you've done. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Like we shouldn't be looking out. I keep pushing this thing that we shouldn't be looking outwards for validation. Because mm -hmm. no one's walking in your shoes. No one knows your journey. No one sees the hard work you're putting in. Oh, yes. you know. So why mm -hmm. do other people's opinions matter so much? Why does your well, validation whole... matter so much? <laughs> yes. yes. But that's a whole spiritual journey. I think, um, that, you know, I was just teaching the Bhagavad Gita course. And the first entire section is about that journey. Like recognizing that you are a spirit soul. That your Atma is satchidan and eternal full of light full of joy but that confidence and security can only come through deep spiritual realization because otherwise we're constantly like you're saying looking for validation everywhere we're looking for someone else to tell us our worth like oh this paycheck tells you how much you're worth yeah you know it's and, material and, stuff isn't it yeah and it's true like you're saying you can't quantitatively uh say that you oh, oh rocky you've done so much yeah. But but that has to be for us to recognize. When I see my children happy, flourishing, you should know. You should know that what you're doing is completely invaluable. There is no price you can put on it. That child that is in your care and so dependent on you and their entire future rests on whether you are happy with them, literally. All the child needs to know is that I am, I am not a burden. I am not taking away from my mother's life I'm not taking away from my father's life because a lot of the times the message we're giving to them is not now later don't don't bug me don't you know don't be in my space don't be in my time um and that that is the most uh you know dangerous thing we could be doing because the, the child the, that's where our sense of lacking comes if our own parenting was such that you know, the child is secondary. I'm not saying everything has to revolve. I'm not a very, I'm actually, you know, we have a lot of rules and regulations in the household because it's not about just saying yes to everything. It's not about just saying, yeah, do whatever you want. That's not what I mean. I mean, we're going to do everything together. 
is going to be very structured, very spiritual. We're going to do everything that you need to, your homework, this, that, all the structure that you can think of. But I'm going to be here with you and I'm going to value it with you because I value you and I want to, um, you know, help you on this journey. So it's very tricky because a lot of the times we want to say we love you through things and just saying yes to everything. But that also is completely gives the opposite result because mm -hmm. it's not just about saying yes to everything. It's about being um, present enough and having enough time to discipline for each particular situation and guiding through all the, and it just takes so much energy and so much time that it is a full-time and plus job, just motherhood itself. So I, the idea that we've got to have a full-time job and do that, it's almost impossible. Of course, many women do it and they do a grand job of it. But if you could have the choice to stay home, why wouldn't we take it? It's very interesting you say that, that if you had the opportunity, why wouldn't you take it? And I think a lot of moms probably wouldn't take it in today's day and age if they had that option. I don't think I mean, a lot of moms people would. Just, moms are honest with each other when they say, we, I go back to work because I bloody need to. I need yeah. a, just an escape from it. And that's fine. And we can laugh about it. And I might even agree with you. I need an escape sometimes. I totally do. But as long as it's not a permanent escape, you know, go away for, you know, a couple of hours out of the week. That's what I do. You know, go and meet some friends or, you know, I, I do what I need to, but to fill my cup. Yeah. But if you're just taking a job so that you can, that's a long time to be away. Then the child knows. Yeah. Then the child knows that actually she, she doesn't really want to spend time with me. Yeah. So I have uh, my, my Bhabi, Chanda Bhabi, she's an incredible lady. She has three kids and she has to work because, you know, it costs yeah. a lot of money to raise three kids. But when she's back at home, you know, she just makes the home so much fun. The kids know that my mom wants to be with me. And the fact that she's at work, um, it, that's just circumstantial. She has to go to work because we need the money. But when she's back, they know mom loves me and yeah. everything she's doing is for me. You know, she's not trying to just get away from me. So children are very, very smart with energy with with emotions they're emotionally very in tune we cannot hide that so we have to just be honest with ourselves and if we're struggling in that relationship of motherhood i think that change can only come from within first so with this like because one of the big things of starting this podcast is when we become pregnant and then we go to these antenatal classes. It's all about the baby, right? They teach you how to feed the baby. They teach you if your baby cries like this, they want this need. But there's generally nothing about what to do for the mothers. I mean, I think people forget that when a child's born, the mother is born as well. They don't yeah. have one with like a, a manual to say, oh, this is what's going to happen in your life. And you're yeah. going to have a baby and this is one of what you're going to go through. Yeah. So one of the biggest kind of things that I want to push through this podcast is trying mm. to get people, mothers in particular, to kind of understand that these things happen, this is how your mindset should be, this is what you mm. might be up against, where to go for support. And I think that, you know, that village that everyone keeps talking about, I yeah. think that has changed for a modern oh. world. So I think going back to what you were saying about mm. like the Vedic system, there's a lot of traditions out there that mm. help this village to be there for the mom. Like, I know like when you have a, a baby, six weeks, you don't go out, you don't no. do anything, you it's literally... Right. Take care exactly. of the baby and that's, that's it. Right exactly. Yeah. And I think we're kind of losing that a little bit in today's day and age as well. Because, you know, I know with my first, I did it. I think even with my second, I did it. But there, with my third, I think after after three weeks, I was like, right, I'm, I'm ready now. Let's start. Let's start my life again. Um, But I think it's so needed to go back to kind of mm -hmm. how our, our previous generation, our grandparents, how mm -hmm. they kind of took to the whole motherhood. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that would be really, really good if, you know, we could have that knowledge because I don't think we have that knowledge anymore. I think it's just mm -hmm. been lost as generations go on a little bit. Absolutely. I, I, I had the opposite experience because I didn't really, like I've come to this late, but with my first, with Raman, I just kind of, I think within the first 10 days, I was going to the really? temple and doing all kinds of stuff because I didn't really, I was still a feminist, hardcore, I still am. But thinking, well, oh, I'm not going to be limited by this thing, by people telling me, you know, old wives tales, these, these old ladies telling me I should just rest. Like I thought I knew better. 
we always think we know better. And of course, with the first one, I had a, a lower back pain that started because I started too early yeah. and I should have rested and I should have eaten the right food and it's still there. So with every pregnancy, we don't realize what it's going to take. But women who've been through it will tell you, yeah. hey, if you don't rest now, you're going to pay for it for the rest of your life. So this is the idea. If we don't acknowledge our so-called biology, you know, nowadays you can't even mention it's a, a woman is someone who has a period. You'll get canceled. I'm, I'm going to get canceled if I say that. A woman is someone who can give birth. So the idea is to just pretend like that biology isn't there. Mm -hmm. And that's really detrimental because all it's doing is that when you go through that biology, you're going to try to avoid it. You're going to try to neglect it. You're going to try to suppress it. And we're just going to keep feeling the physical, the mental, the emotional stress throughout. So with the first, I got a lower back pain, which took years to get rid of because I didn't take care of myself. I did not want to be limited by my experience. With the second, I had a mini prolapse. With the third, I learned my lesson. I stayed put for 40 days and I ate all the right foods and I had a wonderful experience. Mm. So it's just, it's really shocking because you're right. We think all these so-called uh, ancient stuff is all just to, you know, and it's being lost. It's, 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 it's being lost because we're accepting this different narrative yeah. That everything Indian or old is somehow, you know, oppressive. It's somehow backward. But I am here to tell you through firsthand experience that listen to everything your grandma is telling you, man. Just just write it all down because it is being lost. And I and I, you know, as soon as I had that experience, I was like, I need to, you know, start making videos about this. Just like you wanting to start making videos because as soon as you have that awakening and that light goes off. You're like, I want to tell everybody. Because yeah. you're right, the antenatal classes are not going to tell you. <laughs> they, don't, they don't even tell you anything, literally. You walk in thinking, yeah, yeah, I know everything about this child. But then when sleep deprivation what is in, what do I do? Like, how do I deal with it? And I think if we knew how to deal with these things, I think it would stop so many issues like postnatal depression, like, you know, all the anxiety that comes along with it. All of these kind of issues is because we, we're walking into unknown territory. We don't know how to deal with this. We're going yeah. on what people around us are going on. But obviously, they all come with their own narratives and yeah. their own things. So you don't really know, should I go this way? Should I go this way? What's the right way? We're having to reinvent the wheel yeah. each time any woman gets pregnant. And that's just really absurd. Absurd. Like we, we should be. See, the other thing is a lot of women don't even come to ask so many girls i'm like well don't you want to know like i get surprised when a new mother or a new lady's getting pregnant and they don't even have any questions i'm like okay you know i wait for the after pregnancy then they're like oh hey hey you know got list. <laughs> yeah so if, if you're thinking about having a baby ask someone yeah. around yeah. you who's already had a kid don't be you know just let that guard down let that ego down and just be like hey you know what are your tips mm -hmm. because it's really hard in this day and age we kind of pretend like we know it all or Google knows it all or YouTube will know it all, but there's nothing like firsthand experience. There's nothing like someone who can be there as a friend, a mother who's already done it. Ask them. Yes. Someone who's actually done it maybe without so many obstacles. Ask someone who's, you know, followed and it worked for them because that was the ancient tradition. You listened to the elders in the, in the community, someone who's already been through it. And we're finding it really hard these days because we don't want to accept that kind of other authority. We don't want to give anyone else the power. Whereas we'll go to an antenatal class and believe everything they say. But God forbid your grandmother says something. You know, God forbid your mother is telling you something or your, your mother-in-law is telling you, oh, well, psh, forget that. Why should I believe anything she's saying? Why? Yeah. Why do we have such a blockage against taking help from other women but instructors at antenatal classes or the nurse and the doctors is fine yeah. we have lost faith in our own hindu identity in our own vedic system in our own ancient cultures and that's actually the saddest part for me because um we're just shooting ourselves in the feet you know we're gonna have to reinvent the entire thing ourselves and learn the hard way like i did mm -hmm. like i did you know and i 
So it's, yeah, I now want to shout it off the rooftops that, hey, you know, everything old isn't old. <laughs> I think it's all, all making a comeback as well, though, isn't it? Like, is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, don't we have like doulas now that basically do the same thing as I remember my, my grandma house. doing for, for us that they, they, there's an actual person that comes out to look after you and your baby to massage your baby all those crazy amounts of money for that yeah think. exactly but this is what my grandma used to do for us like so. there was a village doula who charged nothing she wasn't even paid she just went around and helped out and she, so let's not knock what we don't know you know especially with our Vedic culture because um yeah, everything I've gained from it is, is really profound. It's a it's an identity, um, like a reality. Like, like it's actually helped me understand that my experience of motherhood is sacred, yeah. and it's given me all the tools that I've needed. And yes, we we're going to have to adjust. You're right. Like you're saying that, you know, we don't have that support system anymore. But we can also look online like the same places that I'm kind of knocking like Google and YouTube will also have you know this podcast will be somewhere where you can then you know know where to go from that go to your grandparents yeah open yeah. up an Ayurvedic book open up something that will tell you um that hey what you're going through is not just you by yourself um yeah there's we, we'll have to just be a little bit mindful of filtering the narratives that come in that's it and I think also with that, like I'm saying the support isn't there anymore, but I think it's a different kind of support. Yeah. I think that's where it will come down. We we have a support, but it's not your traditional friends, family, immediate family, that kind of thing anymore. Now it's may wider, not. Exactly. Yeah. It's more mm -hmm. of a wider thing now where you have to look external a little bit. But I think we as mothers need that confidence to be able to ask or to be able uh -huh. to look or to go beyond our day-to-day -day people because I think that's where that's the only way to learn right that's the only way you're going to learn you, if you're constantly going like I think I was um my previous podcast it was on uh birthing like having a positive birth and she said it like, everyone around her was at, before she got pregnant there was a lot of issues within the family with getting pregnant and things like that and that's all she heard so she innately started thinking yeah. that, that that's what's going to happen and she was mentally preparing herself to that but she got mm. pregnant straight away and she she had no problems in that mm. sense so I think if we go into motherhood with an open mind I think that's that makes masses of difference like I'll tell you about myself mm. my first second and third I've gone in saying whatever's going to happen is just going to happen like we have to go okay. with the flow leave it up to you know higher authority or whatever it is yeah. um and I'm not joking my pregnancy my birth was so easy considering all the other stuff that I got told so yeah. easy and yeah. even after, to be honest, even after, it's not been hard as that. So I think yeah. for me, it's more, been more external things, pressures and expectations and all of that. But in terms of if I look at strip it all back and just look at my pregnancy, mm. myself, my mm. birth, it was so easy. Like when people talk to me, I'm like, birthing is a breeze. Like there's nothing wrong with it. But I think mm. it's because I went in with that mindset that there mm. isn't, you know, we're just going to get on with it. Things will all go good. You know, mm. if we need it, obviously complications arise. Um, mm. But the way you deal with those complications and those consequences, that makes a difference, I think. Yeah, and it and it, I'm sure your mindset had all the yeah. effect and outcomes. So, for sure, for sure, that the the entire um, system of koro bharwanun and looking after the 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 pregnant lady, it's about that mindset. It's about like empowering you and thinking, hey, this is such a special time. We're all so excited. We're all waiting for this baby and everyone's praying. Everyone's um, so that helps build that positive mindset. Yeah. Now, if we don't, I mean, you know, you've got baby showers. There's something similar nowadays in the modern world. We've got everyone coming together and trying to hopefully be positive and actually give blessings. But I agree that mindset of going and I had a similar mindset. I was just like, especially about pain. Yeah, um, I think the spiritual, uh, my own spiritual sadhana and practices had had kind of allowed me to understand that pain isn't necessarily like this thing to be afraid of. Mm. You know, pain does not have to be associated with fear. We can actually um, embrace that pain with the idea that it's it's allowing me birth into a whole other world. You know, nothing comes without pain in life. We were working hard for all of our accomplishments so 
specifically with pain, your relation, my relationship with pain has changed because every time I, you know, after you go through the first birth and you realize, oh, this is very painful. And then you get pregnant again, you think, okay, it's painful, but I got something so beautiful out of it that, okay, I'm not going to think of pain with fear. I'm going to just go into it thinking it's just a rite of passage. It's going to be temporary. And I'm going to get through this with a lot of strength and a lot of, um, yeah, positive mindset. And that definitely made a difference. Makes a massive difference. I also find like, I think with that as well, I think when you've just given birth, that first, I don't know about you, but all that pain and whatever you go through, the minute you put baby on you, just forget it all. It's just like, it's gone, like, you know, what else? And then, and then afterwards, when you come back to reality again, then you realize and those stitches and you feel all the stitches, you're like, oh yeah, I did go through all that. You know, so you need, you need your 40 days or a month of rest. And that's your birthright, you know, like don't give it up because you think it's limiting. My, my, my point would be to, to own it, you know, take that time off. You yeah. deserve it and ask for help. It's not about, you know, you're going to have to humble yourself. Ask for help. It doesn't mean you're any less. It doesn't make you less strong. You know, take the help. Let other people cook for you for for first few weeks. You, it, um, we know people in um, Alachua around the spiritual community where they have a meal train, like everyone in the community gets together because, you know, they don't all have their in-laws or their parents around. And so if you've got a group of friends, they can come together. Everyone can cook, you know, once every two weeks. That's not so hard. Yeah. And drop off some food for you and your family. So it just takes a bit of the edge off till you get your mind and body back (laughs) recovered. And then you can, then you can run around and, and do all the things that we're itching to do. But I think it's it's great that we we're now like especially through this podcast I haven't realized how many moms have actually started changing the way they think and how mm-hmm. they've actually started changing the narrative I think this generation I think we're, we're full of like game changers here like hopefully for the next generation or the generation after that hopefully things will start changing a little bit but there has definitely been a shift I've noticed with the way we think now well I I've seen a shift in myself so yeah. I can only and then you see, you hear have those similar conversations. Yeah. I do, I do agree. But but I still sense that even within I'm not even talking about just postpartum, even when the kids are three, four, five, seven years old, I'm more and more conversations are anxiety based. Women are still not comfortable with just the idea of well, oh, now I need to race to get back into the career and be productive and um be doing all these things and it's that still is a mindset shift that I I don't think we've reached that one maybe we're changing some of the you know holistic practices that we do but the the shift in our actual womanhood and identity that's a I think that's going to be a real lifelong kind of um acceptance that my menopause All of the stuff that's coming is not limiting me. I'm not less because I'm not doing the same amount that my husband or, you know, all these other people are doing. That is going to have to literally take therapy, like literally take every day. You're going to have to have those conversations with yourself until you're completely comfortable in your skin and saying, I refuse that narrative. So there's a real positive shift in, I think, birthing practices and maybe um, asking for help in that sense but that journey is very long it's not just motherhood is you know it's for life yeah and that we've had that conversation where you're like I I feel like I need to do this and I want to do that and I'm like Paki you've got three kids you've got a baking business you know you don't have to do anymore god you just (laughs) you're doing a lot girl (laughs) and you're like really yeah like yeah you you really are but it is a mindset thing though because even with mine I'm doing I'm, I on paper I look like I'm doing a lot but everything's kind of in unison with the kids like yeah. I've, I've made sure that I don't I don't compromise on their time so when they are at home I am with them you know mm-hmm. whatever even my baking business I will get up at two three o'clock to bake if I need to just so everything is done before the kids get up so that I can spend time with the kids and yeah. it just goes back to this thing yeah I'm working uh, you know it looks like I'm doing a lot but it doesn't feel it it really yeah. doesn't really I'm like yeah bring it on you know I can try and fit it all in. I got 24 hours in the day but yeah as it, long as you make some new time yeah I mean to be honest I'm working on that I am working on yeah that. 
you know through no. this podcast I've learned I have to make this me time and I have started implementing things and I think the kids are seeing that too and mm. I think that helps because then the kids start valuing your time a bit more as well um because I always mm. laugh about it that they because they're so used to seeing me like with them because when they are here it's like right that's their time of course. I make sure I don't try and take things on at their time so anything yeah. I do is either after they've gone to sleep or before they wake up yeah but, now that they're all in school it, yeah it's, now it's... that they're all in school but it's just funny because they they literally think that mommy is like the be all and end all so anything that needs doing they will come to me even if their dad's sitting right next to them Aww. I'll be in a completely different room doing something they'll come upstairs just to ask me for something that's right next to him Aww. like I, I laugh about it so much to them because I'm like you know I'm so used to the fact that I'm here and I'm mm. doing it that they just mm. don't it, it's not even it doesn't even cross their mind that okay let me just ask my dad it's right next to him gotta, re, gotta retrain them Mine, <laughs> I'm like hey Baba's here now we're gonna <laughs> split time he's very he's very helpful and yeah um, we're, we're so grateful but we got lucky with yeah your husband's very helpful and I'm yeah. also very grateful that Bridge is a hands-on yeah, yeah it's a new generation of dads yeah they're not I like, think that that yeah I think that active. helps the narrative too that, oh my goodness you know now I don't think it's this thing about men go to work women stay at home or you know mm -hmm. anything like that now you're seeing a lot more dads being a lot more hands-on doing sure. so much more with their with their children I think it's great I think it really helps that's, build that's positive, the future yeah that's the only way we're going to be able to get out of this uh so-called mindset with, with having very supportive husbands who value what we're doing who actually value and um remind us you know remind me all the time Kishori that's thank you for everything you do like not that I have to hear it but you know sometimes we forget yeah. what the, the importance and we start thinking okay I need to do all these other things you so just it's an autopilot aren't you and then like yeah. you need to be reminded yeah but mm -hmm. I think I think it's great that we have that that we can do much more but at the same time not feel like we're having that's to compromise sure. and we're in competition and things like that I don't think I think when when we kind of overcome that, I think that's where yeah. the beauty of motherhood is, because then you start yeah. appreciating Actually, it for what it is. Yes, and 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 your trust issues are not so great anymore. You you, you realize, okay, I can trust this this man in my life, and he is going to look after me. You know, then 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 I re I reject the narrative of like this movie. <laughs> don't worry, darling. I'm like, I, when my husband says, "Don't worry, darling," I'm like, "Thank God." <laughs> But like yes I am not worried because I know you're here for me yeah yeah well on that note I think it was great chatting to you uh, yeah. thank you so much for coming on and, and giving an, us an insight to all the knowledge oh, that you hold um because we have these conversations all the time so I was like we need to get you on because we we speak with so much ease about motherhood um yeah. but thank you so much for coming on I really appreciate it I appreciate it too Rocky thanks so much yeah.